In just a few days' time, my wife, my kids, and I are going to be in beautiful Medina, Mexico to take possession of a home that we have spent the last two years working with a contractor to renovate. Now, it has been a test. As most of you know who follow this channel, which, by the way, if you want content about Medina, Mexico and travel and real estate in general, please feel free to like and subscribe. But for those of you that follow this channel, you know that we purchased a property after being in Medina, Mexico for about two and a half weeks after saying that we were going to buy property in Mexico for quite some time, fell in love with the city, bought a place, found an architect, and thanks to COVID and changes in plans and a lot of things like that, the renovation has taken a lot longer than it probably should have. But that being said, we're talking about over 5,000 square foot of interior, not to mention the courtyard and the large pool and outdoor area as well. It is a large project. We even added a second floor and an entire kitchen. Yes, two kitchens to the property. But that place has seen a spectacular turnaround, and we are now finally able to go down, take possession of it, and truly call it our own. Because of this, there are things that we want to bring. Some of the clothes that we have here, I want to be able to leave down there so that we don't have to constantly drag clothes back and forth, especially as we go more and more often through the years and then stay down there. Things like that are easy. Things like cups, plates, all of that, we're just going to get while we're down there. If you don't want to go to a local market, there's always Costco, Walmart, and the like. We're probably going to go a little bit more local with purchases like that. But there are some things that are easier to come by or at least the things that we're more comfortable with buying here because we're so familiar with them. So in this video, I'm gonna go through a few things, and I think I counted it up, and it's about 10, that we're gonna pack up here, get down there, that just makes it a little bit easier, feel a little bit more like home, and honestly, helps me just kind of set everything up the way that I like it being set up, and that makes it more user-friendly so that I can set it up for people that are gonna Airbnb, rent, or just for us when we're down there. So here's a list of a few things we're gonna to bring to Medi to Mexico to fill our new place up and uh, let's roll the intro. Now to start, for those of you who don't know, my name is Alexander Howell. This is my channel where I talk about Medi to Mexico specifically, but also travel to Mexico, travel, real estate in general. So a lot of different things in one channel. So if you do like that, feel free to like and subscribe. I've got all of my contact information down below where you can text me if you have a question, email me if you have a question, or if you want to follow me on social media, I just posted some of the newest pictures from last week. We're obviously going to see a little bit more progress when we go down there. Next video, of course. But if you want to do that, um, all the social media links are down below. Normally you can find me at Alexander from KC is in Kansas City. So let's continue with the video. So the first thing that I'm going to say, and I actually just recently fell in love with these. I've been a Roku person pretty much the entire time we've had it, but I've really enjoyed Amazon Fire Sticks. And sometimes when you take technology down there, and we had this issue with our Roku stick, when you take technology from one place to another, you can have some issues. With a Fire Stick, we actually bought the Ultra 4K edition. It was only $40, which $40 per TV is pretty great. But on top of the 4K service, we're also getting gigabit internet to our house. So yes, we're actually using Telmex gigabit internet. It's about, I think it's 75 or so dollars per month, which is about 1500 pesos. And so with that and the one of the other things I'm gonna mention, I believe it's number two, but the Fire Stick is gonna allow us to have basically everybody's channels, Netflix, Disney Plus, everything, just like a Roku stick or anything like that, with the added benefit, and if I'm knocking Roku, I'm really not, I just had a negative experience when I took it down last time, but I'm actually taking them out of the box, loading them up, getting everything set up, and putting a NordVPN software, and for those of you who've seen the video where I talk about that, the VPN allows you to kind of shadow where you are, so if you are somebody that uses PBS or PBS Kids in my situation, the VPN will actually help show that you are in, say, the United States, so you have access to PBS, even though you are in Mexico. Or if you wanna be in Canada, same thing, the UK, same thing. Or if you want the television shows that are available in Mexico, then you just either clear the VPN or leave it there. So while we're there, we're able to access everything from the US to Mexico, anywhere. The NordVPN has a server, we can say that we are there. So on top of not just getting channels that are available in Mexico, we basically get any channel that we're used to here in the States. So that will be preloaded on every single one of the fire sticks. And that way, as soon as I go to the home screen, if I wanna say that I'm in the US, all of a sudden I magically am. So the Amazon fire stick is number one with the VPN software helps. Now what I was referring to in the first one was our Linksys Wi-Fi mesh router system. Say that five times fast. But the reason that I purchased this is actually because I have it 
right here in my home in Kansas City. I'm very used to its functionality. It's a really easy setup. But what a mesh system basically does is you have a single node and you have that right by the actual router that comes to the house. You have that by the modem that comes into the house. Basically your feed for internet comes to a modem and then you direct link it to this router. Now you need to use cat six wire if you wanna make this really good because if you only use cat five, in many cases, in most cases, if not all, it's gonna limit you to 100 megabits a second. This, using cat six, will actually increase that to a potential 10 gigabits a second. So you're basically future-proofing everything, but the one gigabit is really what you want. You want cat six cable connected to your Wi-Fi mesh router system. That way it gives you superior coverage throughout the house, superior speed, and if you're somebody like me that uploads and downloads large file sizes, you're gonna thank yourself. I'll also say a cat six splitter. And the only reason that I say this is lack of experience with modems. So if a modem that comes from the, that comes from your carrier, like ours is Telmex with one gigabit service. If the modem only has one slot, I wanna be able to split it. Now you can do this in a couple of ways. You can get what's called a gigabit hub, which is, I have one over there. It's about yay big. And it's just a very thin splitter. You plug in the one line and it has up to 24, 48, whatever it is, depending on how much money that you wanna spend. But it allows you to split the cable quite a ways. Now, in our situation, everything's gonna be Wi-Fi in the house, so I'm not too worried about it. But let's say at the very point of entry, the only thing I have is the node system that I have, but I wanna increase the speed to say a computer to upload a very big file. That way it's just a little bit faster than over Wi-Fi. I have the ability to do that just by having that one splitter. I connect it to the Wi-Fi, I connect it direct to a computer and boom, files upload faster. So a cat six splitter is a really good idea as well. Now, on top of this, what you want to do is make sure that you bring down some HDMI cables. Now, this seems like a very simple thing, and they, of course, have HDMI cables all over Mexico. I'm not saying that it's some scarcity issue, but it doesn't take up much space. You have the easy ability to order 50, 25, up to 100 feet of HDMI or 6 foot, 12 foot, whatever it might be. So we have three TVs going in initially, eventually four into the house, media room, master bedroom, and upstairs living room. I know exactly what the run is between the upstairs living room and the cable box. All I'm gonna do is make sure that I have the HDMI cable to bring down there because it's easy for me to plan on. It doesn't take up much space in my suitcase and that's gonna be the least of my concerns going forward. And worst case scenario, you can hook up a computer that has an HDMI cord directly to your TV, make it play a little bit bigger. Or if you want to say, eventually buy a Blu-ray player, boom, you've got it right there. Or a gaming system, whatever it might be. You have it available, it's easy to transport, and it's very, very cheap to find. So I'm gonna get that. And I'm also gonna get one HDMI splitter because I don't know if there might be a football game or I wanna have two TVs playing it at the same time in very close rooms, we'll see. but. Again, just kind of future-proofing it for myself. Now, the next thing is actually a kid thing for us because we find ourselves kind of running into a situation where the way that the house designed, the way that the house is designed, they're not far from us, but they're just kind of in a different location. It, you know, it's kind of like a one and a half bedroom setup where you've got the kids' bedrooms upstairs and the parents' downstairs. We're actually getting our kids walkie-talkies. So I don't know how easy they are to find in Mexico, but I didn't want to get them a phone to make random phone calls. And I didn't know if it would transfer internationally, but they make walkie talkies now that can go up to five miles. We ended up buying a good little set of walkie talkies, gonna put each one in each of their rooms, put them all on the same signal, put one in our room. That way when they wake up, boom, we're alerted to it and we're good to go. Now our kids are four and six. They're plenty old enough to figure that stuff out. And they're probably gonna have a lot of fun doing it. But walkie talkies was just one of those things that if you have kids, it seemed like a pretty good idea. Now this one's mainly for me, and you probably hear that my voice is going again, allergies, but uh, I have allergies and a lot of times like, you know, new place, new food, all that kind of stuff. You can start to feel a little sick. Now medicine is available everywhere, but if you have certain medicines that you know how your body reacts to it, trust me, just bring it along. I always bring my allergy medication. I always bring some, uh, some other medication that helps my stomach out a little bit, not because I can't find it there, but just out of pure convenience. I know exactly how I react to it. I know exactly where it is and I don't have to hunt for it if an emergency would happen to break out. So we're packing medicine and we're probably packing quite a not quite a bit, like crazy amounts this time. We're probably gonna pack some this time simply for the fact that we know how it works, we know what we need, and we can keep it down there as long as we want. 
This next one is obviously very specific to me. So we're going to wait to get a computer monitor while we're down there, even though it probably will be a little bit more expensive, but we do have an office set up in one of the rooms to make sure that we have a place that we can go to make videos like we're doing right now, or my wife can work or I can work. We can kind of do whatever we need to, because even though we're down there for quite some time, we do still have to pay the bills, so we're going to have to work even though the kids can have fun. But we're going to bring uh, a mouse, lighting, keyboard, microphone, camera, and I'm actually using my um, <clears throat> my iPhone right now, which has been a pretty successful little venture here because it can record at 4K60. So if you download an app like Camo, which normally works, it didn't work for me today, but uh, you can actually use your iPhone for that as well. So if you're thinking about shooting videos, stuff like that, you're gonna want either a really good camera, high quality camera, high quality camcorder, or if you have an iPhone and you can remember to keep the battery charged, you can literally record at 4K60. And even though it doesn't have the best microphone, Playing around with OBS and a few other systems or the editing software that I have on my computers, that can really help the mic sound even better than it actually does in the initial recording, which is what I do every single time. But the actual recording studio, or for those of you who don't do YouTube, obviously, conference calls, things like that, you wanna make sure that you have a nice clean setup. And if you do wanna start recording stuff to send back home to family, even if it's not something you're putting in the public domain, Still, you want it to look nice, so bring all the stuff that you think you might need to do all of that. That way you're not hunting for it. When you're down there, you can actually just get down, open everything up, and start rolling. And speaking of that, last but certainly not least, and this seems like an obvious one, just like I was saying a second ago, your phone. Now. The reason I say that this is something you need to think about bringing isn't because you should have a phone, of course, but a high quality phone that can record like this one does, no matter which angle, whether it's a selfie camera or the back camera, whatever it might be, if you have a good quality phone, it's gonna be worth its weight in gold because you can take great photos, you have all kinds of effects. I mean, I even have B-roll that I've shot on this exact phone that looks better than professional it looks a lot better than some professional cameras simply because it does have those amazing quality lenses. So think about upgrading your phone if you haven't already. And um, my voice is going, so that's where we're going to finish this up. <laughs> But guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Obviously, if you are still here, you must have enjoyed it. So please feel free to like and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. That will let you know anytime that one of these videos goes live. I have noticed that some people are not getting those notifications and I'll be live streaming quite a bit while we are in Mexico. So you'll definitely want to hit that notification bell so that you know when I'm on so you can ask me any questions that you might have. And subscribing, there's going to be a ton of content coming out and I've got a few ideas for you guys too coming up. So I'm really excited. Again, all of my social media links are down below at Alexander from KC is where you can find me. Instagram is kind of where I mainly find myself. And that's where you'll also find a lot of the pictures while I'm in Merida and about the house and its construction coming up. On top of that, we do have a wonderful Facebook group. So facebook.com slash groups slash travel, the number two Merida. Again, facebook.com slash groups slash travel, the number two Merida. And that is down below as well. And everybody, I am so looking forward to this trip. I hope you, if you haven't already, are able to visit Medida sometime soon. It's a wonderful place to be. It's hot as can be, but in Kansas City right now, it's 101 degrees outside, and down there it's 82. So what's that tell you about temperature? But if you have any questions, you can also just comment down below. And um, as always, peace.